So this is Professor Robarsot's office. So he's the person who's been teaching me relativity, along with one of his wonderful students who's been helping uh, with tutoring me. So today, with his student, I learned how to derive the geodesic equation. So basically, so far in special relativity, we've mostly been dealing with flat relativity, a uh, flat space, flat space time. So there is no curvature caused by mass or energy or the like. So we have a constant, really nice looking metric tensor, which is just eta is equal to minus one, 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 one. Or you can change the signs depending on what you use. It doesn't really change the results of relativity. So, whatever you say, this is pretty simple. But the geodesic equation is what happens when you want to formulate a metric tensor that takes into account the curvature of space-time. Because physics is physics and geometry in general is completely different around a curved space than it is in Euclidean space. I mean, spherical geometry itself, and a sphere is one of the most simple curved spaces, is a very widely studied field. So spherical geometry itself is very hard to deal with, and it's very different from uh, Euclidean space. And now we could have to deal with any sort of manifold because of the properties of a mass distorting space-time. So, essentially, uh, usually, when we have flat space-time, we have that acceleration, or uh, the generalized coordinate double dot is equal to zero. But, uh, now, uh, when we take into account this, we add what is known as the Christoff uh, uh, the Christoph symbol or the Christoph connection. So this thing itself accounts for the entire curvature. Now it has a very complicated expanded form. I'm pretty sure it's three terms. Like I don't quite remember, but it might have been mm, this plus this. Plus this. It's not perfect because I'm probably forgetting something or misusing the indices, but uh, that's just generally how it looks like. And we can obtain a nicer version of this geodesic simply by, I mean, when we're talking about the axon in general, we're not necessarily parametrizing it in terms of x or whatever space time coordinate we're using, but maybe in terms of some other parameter, lambda. So we can choose lambda to be whatever we, uh, we want, and uh, the equation still holds. So we can choose lambda to be something particularly nice, like the space-time interval, and a lot of stuff gets canceled out immediately. So then, uh, this is pretty much all that remains, along with the x double dot. And this is given to be equal to zero. Now, this is just a way to generalize the metric tensor when we're actually dealing with curvature of space-time by masses. So right now in all of our equations, we've just been using this identity, but now that's going to change. So that's really going to change a lot about how we think about relativity, or at least for me it does. So that's what we covered today. Thank you, everybody, for watching.